Welcome to Shaw TV's special coverage of the 2014 municipal elections in the Sea to Sky Corridor. I'm Rebecca Wood Barrett. Join me as we connect with mayoral candidates from Squamish, Whistler and Pemberton. We'll find out what their top priorities are in the next four years in their municipalities. First up is Squamish. Rob Kirkham, the current mayor of Squamish, takes aim at some of the opportunities in sight in a growing community that has business, environmental, and social needs to balance. That's one of the big priorities for me is generating opportunities for employment in Squamish so people can live and work here and improve that work-resident ratio. The last thing we want is to be a bedroom community of Vancouver. People driving up and down the highway don't have time to uh, spend with their family. They don't have time to volunteer for events and organizations, so jobs in Squamish are critical. One piece that's missing is the skills training aspect, and uh, so I've been working with the province to land a facility like that in Squamish. A trained and educated workforce is one of the pillars that supports economic growth. A second pillar is the ease with which businesses can set up and operate, something mayoral candidate Patricia Heinzman, a councillor for three terms, encourages. We need to really clean up our zoning bylaw. Our zoning is very restrictive in terms of where this can go and where that can go and, and what we should be doing is strategically looking at exactly what we think should go where, zoning it appropriately so that it's ready to go. You know, governments don't create business. We're there to facilitate, we're there to get out of the way, we're there to encourage the businesses that are copacetic and fit in with who we are, our environment, our place, our people, all those things, and get out of the way and let the entrepreneurs and the artists and the creative people do their thing. For Ron Bame, local business owner and mechanic, there's much work to be done fixing the connections between the taxpayers, government and staff. The top priority of Squamish is, uh, is to revamp the district of Squamish. It's, uh, we're not heading in the right direction. Uh, there's a total disconnect between the uh, citizens and the district. We're going to have to go in there. We're going to have to speak to each and every staff and employee and management and uh, you know, let them know what we want, see what they need, give them the tools they need to do what, what has to be done. I know there's people there that know it has to be done, but they like their job and they like their paycheck and so they're not saying anything. So uh, we'll get feedback from them. I'll be walking through the community uh, with a pen and pad and taking all of their uh, concerns down and uh, these will be in the forefront until they're dealt with. Going to the community and fostering engagement and visioning is important to all candidates when asking the question, what will Squamish look like in the future? Obviously the oceanfront is key. We have debt there that we need to get rid of and there's an expectation by the majority of the community that we see some sort of really interesting, vibrant, waterfront inspiration down there, some development down there, parkland down there, all those things. So we want to realize those things for sure. There's conversation about, well, does industry and uh, recreation tourism mix? And I would have to say yes they do. I, I think they mix very well and I think Squamish is uh, a poster child of that. All candidates agree, involving citizens in planning and decisions today will create a better vision of what Squamish will be in the future. To find out more about Rob Kirkham, Patricia Heinzman and Ron Bame, visit them online. From Squamish, we headed north up Highway 99 to Whistler, where we caught up with incumbent mayor Nancy Wilhelm Morden and mayoral candidate Shane Bennett. To ensure future success in any municipality, you need to plant strategies in advance. In Whistler, that means digging in to attend to four important reports. Well, for the next four years, I think our priorities ought to be implementing the recommendations from the Economic Partnership Initiative Report. 
We also have the community cultural uh, report that came out a year or so ago with over 30 recommendations for action there. And then the learning and education strategy and we're in the process of implementing some of those over the course of the next four years. For Shane Bennett, his campaign for mayor is run with the support of his family right by his side. One of his four sons, Neo, assists with getting his message out to citizens through online podcasts. It's within my skill set to create a direct democracy system where you would have three scroll bars on a web page and each scroll bar would represent one of the facets, so economic, social and environmental. And hypothetically, you would put in the amount of property tax that you're paying and you could scroll up and down these based on your priorities. So you could allocate more or less individually based on the departments that are within the municipality. The desire for open, two-way communication has been expressed as a must-have by many taxpayers in all three Sea to Sky communities, and it's something Whistler has worked to change and grow over the last term, and hopefully into the future. You might remember what I would describe as a dysfunctional uh, relationship between the Municipal Hall and the community at large. So we, we worked very hard with senior staff to turn things around. I think I can say safely that we've restored the trust between uh, the community at large and Municipal Hall. Well, I've had dealings with the municipality and for instance I've gone into the building department and asked for building code documents and there was resistance I did get them but it wasn't that the staff who came to the front counter weren't a service to others they weren't how can I help you one of the things that we're going to be seeing shortly is the customer service program being rolled out so certainly I will be supporting that initiative and the reduction of bureaucracy as well. Planning, strategy, communication and customer service. All are essential elements for a responsive and effective municipal government. To find out more about Nancy Wilhelm Morden and Shane Bennett, check them out online. In the Sea to Sky Corridor, Squamish, Whistler and Pemberton all have their own unique challenges. However, all the candidates we met have a sincere desire to make their communities a better place for the people who live there. Next up is a place that's affectionately known as Spud Valley. In the rural yet growing community of Pemberton, mayoral candidates search for balance between the town's farming identity and helping young constituents access the services and amenities they need. The biggest challenge is our small tax base. I mean, we're a small town, so much of the financial burden rests on the, the shoulders of the individual taxpayer. We don't have a huge commercial tax base either, and it's something that I'd like to see built up in different areas. What I found is some of the challenges we have is the present administration and uh, They've been doing a lot of big time spending on a small time budget. And we need to curb some of this and uh, take um, a look at uh, the growth in the community so that we can enhance our tax base. Looking at areas like the industrial park and the airport, I think there's definitely some business opportunities there and the ability to grow that tax base as well. And then you gotta get creative. Identifying partnerships, identifying opportunities, Definitely going after grants and whatever else is available is, is important. Building a tax base and then other creative ways of bringing revenues in. To extend the tax base, I think we need to get the present business community and developers involved in the community. That's where we're going to get the new homes and everything else, new businesses, uh, and going to get those added tax dollars that we need. Getting creative on building the tax base will ultimately score points with the active young people of Pemberton. Well, there's a lot of young families here. I think our average age is just under 40 years old. So there's a lot of young families like ourselves. Personally, I drive to Worcester, for example, at least three, four times a week with my kids for different recreational activities. So recreation is always a big one. 
it's a personal one as well. I'm a basketball coach, I'm a soccer coach, I play sports. Uh, my kids are very involved, so to me that's a big key to a healthy community. Recreational needs for the young community are great. We use a lot of whistlers right now in the swimming and ice arena, but this community can't really afford that right now. We would like to do things for the young people. There's a need for it, but uh, we'll have to see how we can go about it. We're surrounded by lots of really capable people, whether at the village office or just our residents. Our residents are our greatest resource. You look at some of the things that have gotten done in town over the last years, the skate park, BMX, the, the playground. These are all things that Pemberton Stewardship, some of the great programs they put together, that's come out of the community. Pemberton will soon elect a new mayor, one which will hopefully forge a bridge between a limited budget and a town's desire for more community services and amenities. If you'd like to find out more about Mike Richmond and Jerry Mose, check out their Facebook pages. Thank you for joining us for Shaw TV's special coverage of the municipal elections 2014 in Squamish, Whistler and Pemberton. And don't forget, get out there and vote November 15th. <laughs>